Right. Okay. So um, thanks very much, everyone, for joining. Um, uh, this is this session is uh, layering Dynamics 365 uh, and the Power Platform over your HMS systems. Um, uh, I'm presenting today. So for those of you who have, have joined the webinars before, uh, usually uh, Jordan uh, would would be here presenting. Um, uh, We've got some really good news. Jordan is actually uh, had to go away uh, very quickly because he's just had a, a baby. So congratulations to Jordan. Um, uh, but you unfortunately, you guys are stuck with me today presenting uh, the slides. Uh, so apologies. I'll do my best Jordan impression with my jazz hands. Um, but uh, uh, certainly nothing like uh, having Jordan here. Um, but pretty good excuse to be fair. Uh, he's away. Um, uh, and uh, you know, best of luck to him uh, for, the, for 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 the future. So really, really good. So um, once again, thanks very much for joining, guys. Um, I'm going to sort of take you through uh, the slide deck today. Um, I've got with me uh, a couple of people as well who are going to be doing some demonstrations. Um, but we're here today uh, to discuss around how we can layer Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform over your housing management system. So. Um, you know, you guys have seen uh, or, or, or will have seen uh, that Dynamics 365 is making you know big headways in, in this market, um, and we really see that there is a place for uh, integration uh, within your housing management system, and this allows us to to keep the really uh, bespoke elements of HMS systems useful, um, and and actually still have that 360 view of a customer. So I'll I'll step through this slide deck today. Um, and, uh, and and we'll keep going. So, what I'll do is I'll just mute everyone for now. And uh, if you've uh, please ha have a chat away in the chat conversations. Uh, if there's anything uh, that you you want to raise, uh, we have some Q and A at the end of this session, and we'll see if we can uh, loop through uh, some of those chats that are raised. But by all means, r raise the chats. Uh, and hopefully we can get from uh, the end of uh, end of this session. Um, so going forward, then uh, just done the, the introductions. Really, um, who are Crimson? So first of all, for the people that don't know me, uh, some of the, some of the attendee lists. I think we we are actually currently working with you. So welcome. Uh, uh, for those that haven't, we're, we're Crimson. Uh, we are a, a primarily a, a fast moving uh, technology recruitment company. We specialize in full range of IT support and consultancy uh, and search and selection services. So our business is really driven by uh, people and our reputation uh, is built on providing products and services that generally reflect our, our values. Uh, and we are Small Crimson, a part of a bigger um, a global company called Nash Squared. Um, you may have heard it um, on a previous name called um, Harvey Nash. Um, we've rebranded uh, a while back to be called Nash Squared, and they're obviously a, a leading global provider of, of talent and technology around the world, hence global. Um, so really what we're going to go, uh, going to sort of give you a little bit of a brief overview of, of what Crimson do. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we have multiple sectors, including uh, local and regional governments, higher education, home builders and housing associations. Uh, and really with the housing associations, uh, we can realize the potential uh, of your investments in the Microsoft low code, no code uh, platform transformation. Um, and really, uh, we, we, with the sort of the cost of living crisis and sort of the pro for world, we, we really look to unlock the opportunities to reduce costs, enhance uh, resident services, um, and really provide that uh, the, the the integrated services that we, you would be looking for uh, within, you know, to service your housing operations. So we have a number of existing clients, which you can see on the slide here, uh, Accent, um, Catalyst, uh, Phoenix, Platform Housing uh, and South Liverpool Homes. Uh, we also have one uh, up and coming, which is quite a large housing association that we've very, very recently signed um, an initial deal and looking for a, uh, an engagement over five years. Um, it's slightly too early to mention who they are, um, but uh, again, you know, we are making uh, big headwinds in in this space, uh, and we're really looking to 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 share our 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 experience and our knowledge uh, of what we've implemented uh, to you fine people on on the call today. 
Um, just going on from that, our service lines, really, we do have uh, resourcing services um, and we have specialist IT consultancy uh, and we have cloud service and managed services. So in terms of the full breadth um, of, of services you'd be looking for for a solutions company, uh, specifically around Microsoft, uh, we can provide that for you. Um, and uh, we are obviously a, a recognized uh, Microsoft um, gold partner in business applications, productivity, DevOps, um, and a silver in cloud platforms. So quite, uh, quite, quite a comprehensive sort of certification list of, uh, of, of employees as well. So unfortunately, uh, you're with me today. Uh, Jordan's uh, had to run off quite early, uh, but I also have with me um, Alan Swift, who is a technical director from uh, Manifest Software Solutions. Um, so Manifest is a leading uh, supplier of integration of uh, uh, solutions into social housing, um, and they have extensive experience working with major housing software providers uh, and, and have a, a proven ability to integrate uh, with, with, with a lot of those systems. Um, so um, that's really good today. We, we, we've got a, a demonstration um, uh, and a bit of a, an explanation of Manifest uh, from Alan today as well. But before we start on that, um, in tradition fashion, Jordan usually comes up with uh, some fun things to do to get everybody uh, energized for the day. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, acutely aware of how early it is. Um, so with that, I've decided to go a slightly different route and hopefully make it a little bit more interactive for the introduction today. Um, and I'm just going to quickly share um, uh, a, a slide here um, just to, uh, if you guys can all grab your phones and scan the QR code or jump onto uh, menti.com. Uh, and once you've got your phones, if you can scan the like button, just so that I can see that you guys um, ha ha have entered in. And what we're gonna do today, just really, really quickly, is uh, I've got just a couple of questions to ask um, so I can get a feel of the room, to understand uh, where you guys are with your housing management systems, um, and maybe um, a bit of an understanding around your uh, your integration needs or, or feelings towards system integrations. Um, so uh, there is literally just a couple of fun questions. And um, what's useful is um, as you're answering these, they'll pop up on the screen and therefore we can have a bit of a conversation around it, but also you guys can understand uh, the audience as well. So what everybody's thinking uh, and what everybody's doing. So I'll jump onto the first question now. And hopefully your mobile phones will uh, jump to the first question, which is how much does your current HMS manage your housing operations? So is that hardly any, less than half, more than half, all of it? Um, you know, just to understand in what region does your housing management system sort of provide all of your operational services? Um, so more than half, which is really good. So that's five, five, five people at the moment. So that's that's winning, that's leading. Uh, a couple with all of it. That's really interesting. There must be a, a, a fantastic HMS system that you guys have have got in there. Um, but obviously, quite a few on there is less than half as well. Um, interestingly, with HMS, because we understand it is the backbone um, of of, of uh, housing association systems, I'm not surprised. Uh, that there isn't anybody jumping on with hardly any. So it kind of makes sense, really. Uh, but that's really interesting that, you know, you've only got two people out of that th this audience who are saying all of it's on, all of it's on the HMS. So because of that, we can, uh, we can now understand that integration at some point or for some area within your business is absolutely critical. Um, so you can see that more than half, 13, and obviously less than half, six, um, you know, you guys would be looking for some sort of integration or have implemented some sort of integration to allow the data to be communicated and to get that 360 view of your customer potentially. So that's really, really good. Um, just a quick one then going across from here, uh, system integration. So just enter in a couple of words or a phrase or a couple of phrases. Um, when we when you think of system integration, um, what are you feeling? Are you, you know, you're happy, are you excited, or, you know, is it tricky? Have you been burnt in the past? Um, you know, pain, there you go, brilliant, first one straight out. Um, yeah, totally get it. You know, these things are 
uh, traditionally when, you know, certainly with Crimson, when we're uh, creating um, integrations um, or when we're, we're launching into housing management system uh, implementation, you know, integration is the trickiest part. So look at this data integrity. It's a must have very much, very important. Uh, slow. That's really interesting. Frustrating. So there's a lot of good words here that, that really kind of uh, encapsulate uh, some of the experiences certainly that Crims have been having. So that's absolutely fantastic, guys. Um, thank you very much for, for, for doing that. Um, what we'll do is I think if you carry on to, towards the end of this, um, you can sign up and then just get a full a, a full understanding of, uh, of of that those metrics going forward. But thanks very much for the input on that one, guys. That's really, really good. High maintenance, confusing. Yeah, re really, uh, really does resonate with me. So fantastic. OK. So on to, uh, on to the rest of the genders for today. Um, what we're going to be doing uh, is uh, what, what I said before, you know, we're going to be layering Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform over the HMS system. Uh, and uh, as I said, I've, I've got with me uh, Manifest Software Solutions today. Um, so just a little bit um, around the uh, uh, some more detail. Obviously, as we've said before, housing management systems are totally the back backbone of housing associations. And based on that slide information, it's very clear that although it's brilliant for certain elements of operations like uh, rent accounting, uh, repairs or property information, it doesn't serve absolutely everything. Um, so there is obviously a need for integration. Now, when Dynamics 365 comes involved is that Microsoft is really your uh, your 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 customer experience, your tenant experience um, uh, provider. Uh, and it really is a fantastic tool that allows you to really capture, automate, process, um, and, and, and assess some information around your customers, around your tenants, uh, and really being able to utilize that front end communication engine as well. So the ability for us to, um, to, to integrate or have that layer over the top of your housing management system would is really beneficial and allows us or the technology to plug those gaps that potentially your housing management systems have. Um, so really, really useful to understand where we're going with that. Um, and at this point, I'm going to introduce uh, the uh, Manifest uh, Software Solutions. And um, uh, what Alan is going to show you today is just a bit of an explanation of, of the software, but also a little bit of a demo as well. So what I'll do now is uh, I'll, I'll introduce Alan. Alan, um, jump on, take control of the screen uh, and, uh, and go through your uh, your slides. Thanks, Alan. Oh, thanks very much, Ollie. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, I, I saw those comments coming up about um, integration, clunky, frustrating, uh, terrible, painful, and I was thinking, God, those aren't the customers. Uh, but <laughs> so I'm assuming they're people we don't work with, <laughs> which I think most of you, yeah, is the case. Um, We've, we've obviously spent a, a lot of time working on integration. My name's Alan Swift. I'm the uh, technical director at Manifest Software Solutions. Um, I like to think, uh, and I'm not really ever challenged on it, that we're now the leading provider of um, systems integration in social housing. Um, we only uh, specialise just in social housing, so it does sort of set us apart, I suppose. And I'll explain why I think we're in that position um, shortly. Um, Hopefully everybody can see that slide. Um, it, uh, just a very quick thing on on who we are. Uh, it's quite hard to demonstrate integration because it's sort of the invisible stuff that travels down the wires and you see it arrive in somebody else's system. Uh, but the actual process of it is uh, quite tricky to, to show. Um, so I'm going to explain what we do and show you a few things that you can see. Um, what we provide is the uh, all the integration software. Um, we have our own application, the Universal Adapter. We're also a Microsoft partner, so we use all the Microsoft Azure infrastructures and everything else and plug into pretty much anything. Um, when we say integration framework, the idea of this is that it's um, a sort of scripted environment, a low code environment that's very fast to, to develop integration. Um, it's very transparent, everything's readable, it's all in clear text, you can read any SQL queries, web services, all that sort of thing. So it, it's very visible. But also, as it says on the slide, you've it puts a wrapper around all your integration so that 
um, if anything happens or you want to know what the status is of a particular thing, you can look at the integration framework and see it all in one place. So some of the comments that were coming up about confusing, clunky, what we try and do is we actually surface all that um, so that you can see what's happening at any time. So that's, that's what we mean by an integration framework, self-monitoring, secure, everything in one place, everything visible, uh, everything accessible to you. So hopefully uh, knock the, some of those words that you were uh, spinning around earlier, um, you know, takes those out of the equation. Um, we obviously have quite a lot of technical skills, as you would hope. Um, but the biggest thing that sets us apart, I think, is the is our housing experience. I've worked in social housing, I think now for about 30 years um, in numerous different roles. We're always in a housing IT environment. Um, every single person in the technical team has a background working in housing IT. Um, so we've got people who used to work for MRI, people that used to work for Arian, people that used to work for Civica. Um, we've got experienced people who are uh, IT managers, ex-IT managers from housing IT groups. And the reason that's important is because when you're talking about integration, often the business isn't talking about REST web services and APIs and XML. What they're talking about is contractor appointments. They're talking about gas servicing. They're talking about compliance issues. Issues, they're talking about that all the things that we're looking at at the moment in the sector. So fuel poverty, they don't want to talk technical, they want to talk housing and that's what we do. So every technical person has to have had a background working in housing IT. The other thing that sets us apart, uh, hopefully to knock a, another few of those uh, words that you were spinning around as well um, off the page. Uh, it was quite nice seeing that when everybody put those comments on because I thought actually I could do with a copy of that because it's like that's like our leader as to what we do and why we exist. Um, but the last one that sets us apart is that uh, support. Um, our belief is, is that um, Integration can mean you've got a system talking to another system. When something goes wrong, you can end up in a situation of finger pointing. So is it the contractor sending you a duff data and that's why it won't load into your housing management system? Or is it that the housing management system has been changed and it's not doing something? So you end up finger pointing. So what we do is in our G Cloud contracts, we're a Crown Commercial Services supplier, then in our G Cloud contracts, we warrant that we will own the integration completely. So it doesn't matter whose problem it is. Bear in mind, we often will be integrating, say, 20 or 30 different systems on a, for a particular customer. You just tell us there's a problem. We'll work out where the problem is and contact them for you if you want us to. And if we can, we'll put a play, something in place to work around the problem. So a classic example, and I use contractor integration a little bit on this, but which we do a lot of, is if somebody uh, tries, the contractor tries to complete a job and it fails, we make dial on and realize that that's because someone's cancelled the repair. So there isn't really an issue as such, not a technical issue, but we'll investigate that and we'll contact people and let them know. We can also automatically trigger uh, emails to people and let them know that there's issues as well. And any problems that happen out of hours uh, will automatically create support desk tickets directly on our support desk. So often we know there's a problem and we're already dialing on looking into it before our customers even know there's an issue. And I think that's immensely important where everybody at the moment is into saving money, um, you know, making sure their teams are efficient, they're working on the right thing. You don't want to have your day ruined because you've got a support issue. So we own that support space for you. So hopefully some of those words about frustrating and, you know, painful, um, hopefully we take quite a lot of that away for you. So that's what we do. Uh, specialist systems integration, uh, provide all the software, Azure infrastructure, everything that you need, uh, all the technical skills and uh, support um, the whole thing for you, really. Work, as I said, um, local authority housing um, and housing associations, a little bit of social care as well, uh, which I think is just my sort of social conscience um, in the company, I think. Uh, but we, so we, we provide a bit of social care integration where we where we're called upon it as well. We also provide uh, services directly to uh, some of the larger um, repairs providers as well. So people like Brea, people like that, CTS in Northern Ireland who uh, 
uh, provide services to the Northern Ireland Housing Executive, Clan Mill, people like that. So there's a lot more people we integrate with than there is on that list. Those are the main customers where we're providing multiple integrations. So, you know, um, there'll be people on there which are contractor integrations, there'll be people that are integrating with DWP, people that are integrating with DRS scheduling, people who are integrating with uh, third party systems, Paypoint, Mobisoft, people like that. And we integrate with all of those. <coughs> so, Working in housing and and um, I suppose as long as we have and as, lo as long as a lot of my staff have had, what we find is everybody's got lots of different systems and it was interesting on your slide and I, I don't know, I think Ollie was a bit surprised a little bit because it, it, you always think housing management system contains 100% of everything. Uh, but of course, for a lot of us, we realise that actually most of the data is housing management, but actually a lot of the data is in external systems like true compliance uh, for compliance integration um, uh, again mobisoft for doing rent sense um, docusign for automated electronic tenancy signups um, total mobile for contractor repairs telephony integration uh, all these sort of services that we all use every day um, are actually a part of the landscape of what we've got now, traditionally integration, the reason you saw all those words are frustrating and painful and everything else is because they're all talking to each other with the exclusion of each other. So what you find is you've got hundreds of point to point interfaces. So you've got a housing management system that can take a payment from Paypoint. You've got a housing management system that can raise a repair through a, a scheduling system like FLS. Um, you'll have FLS talking to a contractor system. You'll have all these systems talking to each other, but all using proprietary point to point interfaces, which are very difficult to see what's going on. If you get a problem on one, you don't know why, um, and to it basically support and extend. Also, you're only using them for one purpose. So what we try to do is we try to disconnect that a little bit, <coughs> reuse them where we can, um, and basically put ourselves in the middle of it all to orchestrate it and put some a sort of structure and some logic around the integration. So everything is coming through us. So as we've got there, Crimson will send us a request saying we want a rent statement. That's fine. We'll go away and get that from whatever system's got the rent statement in it, or whatever the best data. So for rents, generally has a management system. If there's data about I want my repair list, but some of those appointments are actually held in different systems in advanced DRS, some are in contractors, then we'll go and talk to all those systems and return that back to Crimson so that it can be displayed. So what we're trying to do that is open up all your systems and actually make that data available. Now, wherever there's a touch point on a system, that system can then talk to any other system. So if you've got a mobile working solution, then you can use the same interfaces that Crimson are using, for instance. So you're reusing a lot of your integration now. So not only are you simplifying it and putting it into one place, but you're also restructuring it and reusing it as much as possible, which gives you an immense amount of, um, uh, sort of value for money. Obviously, it makes things a lot easier for us because we've got one central point where we're actually monitoring everything. And this is where that scripted environment comes from, where we can turn around and set up an interface very quickly. So you can grow this. This isn't a day one thing. You can start off quite small and add on integration when you want to. And bring new systems in. And one, one, just one little thing as well with integration that people often think it's about locking systems together, making them talk to each other and rigidly setting them together. It's actually we try and make it a bit the opposite to that. We try and make it so it's quite flexible. So bizarrely, and we, we do this occasionally, if you change your housing management system, it doesn't change your, scrims, your Crimson applications. What we'll do is Crimson would still talk to us. We would then repoint at your new housing management system. It might even be where you've got uh, during a transition phase where you've got two housing management systems, you're running rents on one and repairs on another. It doesn't matter to us and we present the data back to Crimson in the same format. So what we're acting as here is a gateway so that Crimson can get whatever data it needs from whatever systems you need. And as you saw on the on your survey, primarily that's from your housing management systems. 
but it doesn't have to be. So if you've got all your documents in SharePoint, for instance, we'll bring the documents from SharePoint. Um, if you've got a proprietary document management system, we can bring the documents from there. So it gives you flexibility and that's what you're looking for from integration. It does allow everything to talk together, but it shouldn't be rigid. It should be flexible. It should be able to grow with you and it should be able to change and it should de-risk you making changes to your infrastructure as you move things to the cloud and you change your systems. It should give you that flexibility. And that's what we spend a lot of time doing. So we start off usually quite small for people and then very soon, um, before you know it, we're running 20 or 30 different integrations across different systems. They're moving systems into the cloud, they're replacing different systems, they're bringing in new compliance systems and new processes. And we're constantly working with the customer to develop this, this integration and automation. And as I say, we support the whole thing. So hopefully you can see that from your comments earlier about confusion and complication and it's technical and it's all very messy and I showed that diagram with all the lines going everywhere. This is what we then see when we've gone through and uh, put the, un the manifest universal adapter in. So it's a lot tidier. Um, we work very closely uh, obviously with Crimson. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure working with them and it, it's it, the, the power of what we can do because it's very frustrating for us. We work in the land of data, so we never get to see it actually presented. So it's brilliant that we all the presentation and the actual hard work is being done by Crimson and we're just shoveling data and moving things around in the background, um, like the proverbial sort of um, uh, legs of a swan under the water a little bit. Uh, so, but we also work, we're also partners for Mobisoft, um, DocuSign, Total Mobile, Paypoint. Uh, we work with most of the systems that are actually in the housing sector. We currently integrate with every single housing management system. Um, that's all the way from the smaller ones, the Rubik's, all the way up to NEC, Northgate systems. Now, the way we do that <coughs> is we, we put in a um, an Azure cloud layer generally. It, it, there's lots of different ways and it depends on your strategy and your IT infrastructure. But what we tend to do more and more recently is we put in a cloud integration layer that sits between your, I say on-premise systems, but often they're not on-premise anymore, but they're, they're your private systems in your private cloud or on your physical network that sits between that private layer and your cloud systems and what that allows us to do is to be able to transfer system data regardless of where anybody wherever the system is so if you've got an old capita system that's on premise but you've got the latest state of the art sharepoint and exchange services and you've got crimson layered over the top of it it doesn't matter we we can transfer data between on premise systems cloud systems we just join it all up together. The way we do that is as it shows at the bottom of the screen, there's an on-premise, we have our own on-premise gateway that we've developed, all Microsoft uh, stack, um, that allows us to communicate and exchange data with any on-premise systems. Then what we have is our own hosted um, Azure cloud layer that all the cloud systems can talk to. So Crimson will say to us, to will call into us in Azure saying, I want this data. If your system is on premise, we'll go to the on premise gateway and get the data for them. Um, if the system is cloud hosted, like a Civica cloud system, we'll get the system, we'll get the data from the Civica system. If it's a mix of three different systems, we'll get all the data from different systems wherever they sit, bring it all back together and pass it back to Crimson for processing. So that way you've opened up not just your housing management system, but every system that you've got available on your networks. And that can even be systems, you know, um, government systems, DWP, um, government connect systems for SMS text messaging, whatever it is you want to access, we can access through those systems. So that's the sort of architecture and the other nice thing with doing it as much as we can in Azure is obviously you don't need to uh, keep building new systems on your on premise network, which a lot of the IT teams are trying to get rid of now. So where we can, we host everything in our Azure cloud. Also makes it a lot easier for us to support because obviously when you've got a problem, we just look directly in our own network and we find um, we can trace any issues from there. Now, <clears throat> you still have lots of data moving around. 
So you, you're pulling data from repairs contractor systems, from your housing management systems, you're displaying data, sending data to Crimson, Crimson's sending data back, we're updating multiple systems with that data, contact telephone numbers, things like that across all your estate. Um, you need to be able to see that data and see what's going on. And again, coming back to your comments earlier on um, about the confusion and the frustration, you need to be able to visualize that. So what we also do is we have um, web consoles for viewing your integration. You can suspend the integration. If there's an issue, you can look at the error logs. You can do it from your mobile phone. Um, you can restart integration the processes. You can also layer over it a dashboard. Because one thing with integration, when you start putting it through one point, all your data is going through that through that pipe. If you can look in that pipe, you can see everything that's going on. So all your cash that's coming in, say real time cash from all pay will be coming through real time. You'll also be getting daily cash files possibly as well. They'll be coming in. So if you do a campaign to uh, publicize doing web payments, for instance, or phoning in and doing payments, you want to see how effective that's becoming. Well, rather than try and trace, go back to Allpay or look in your housing management system and start running all reports everywhere, we give you a dashboard that you can layer over the integration framework. And as you can see on there, you can then see the amount of repairs being added by different areas. You can see how much cash has been posted, how much housing benefit has been posted, any issues with the data, any warnings to do with national insurance numbers and things like that. So we're trying to bring this data and make it a living thing that you can use. Um, and again, hopefully that ticks off a few more. I would, I'll have to get the information back for Molly at the end to see how many I've ticked off, but hopefully a lot of those negative uh, words were um, around that type of um, th this frustration that you can't see what's going on. We also have a um, this just a live uh, dashboard look, web console. This one's uh, Hammersmith and Fulham's um, dashboard where we can see that I've got 16 active processes running uh, concurrently on their servers at the moment. So they're exchanging data with 16 different systems potentially. Um, and I can see that all of them are running. Um, they're all fine, loads of green ticks, things like that. I can then drill in and actually look at the status of every single interface that they're running on their network at this current time. And this is their live uh, web console. So if there were any problems with anything, they would be showing up with red exclamation marks. They would have created a support ticket within our support system. Somebody uh, should be contacting them to arrange access to the systems to try and trace them down. Likewise, you get an additional button come up that shows a full diagnostic log as well. So this is traditionally used by IT, but it doesn't have to be. We can also make it available to power users as well. So they can check when the cash was posted, how much cash was actually posted through it, uh, how many repairs are going through at the moment, how many voids there are, that sort of thing. How many jobs have been sent through that are over an authorization limit, all this sort of thing. So this gives you an idea of how we try and surface, and, and this is an ongoing journey for us as well, but to try and surface integration so that it's no longer that mystery that it always was. Um, and it's not that frightening thing that I think people were saying on there as well, whereby if there's a problem with it, you just come to us and tell us. Because it's all we do every day. We don't have any lives. Uh, we just sit here. <laughs> just, it sometimes feels like that. <laughs> <laughs> but all we do is just look at data. Um, I know some systems databases so well, yeah, I wouldn't know how to log in and actually use their screens. So, so that's um, essentially what we um, what we do as a business and how we work with Crimson is we provide that standard layer, fully supported layer. So Crimson can function focus on what you want as functionality without worrying about what system the data is coming from and how you get that and supporting it. We do all that for you um, and obviously with other systems as well um, as you want to. We add those in for you as well. And that's it, Ollie. I think I, I, um, I don't know when you want to do questions at the end or something like that, but uh, hopefully that gave everybody an overview of who we are and what we do. Fantastic. That, thank you, Alan. Yeah, that's brilliant. What we'll do is I'll I'll quickly just run through uh, a little demo about um, now we've got the data in the system. Now now we've got got these systems talking through Manifest. 
uh, what, what we can do within Dynamics 365 and, and, and some of the functionalities I've just cherry picked out to sort of highlight that. Uh, and then we'll do questions at the end uh, where, when, when we've done that one. So thank you so much, Alan. That, that really gives us a great insight into, into the business and in, into those solutions and the possibilities of how we can resolve all of those uh, all of those comments earlier on. So fantastic. Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen again. Um, and we will go through a bit of a demonstration of Dynamics 365. So hopefully you guys can all see the screen. And what we'll do is uh, for those of you who don't really uh, have any experience with Dynamics 365 or the Power Platform, I've just kind of dug into um, one of the areas behind the scenes, which sort of shows you our Housing Association Accelerator and some of the applications that we have created um, to highlight the, the features and functionalities of Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform uh, with our sort of industry knowledge and expertise um, on that. One of the areas I'm going to be focusing on today is uh, applications and tenancies or lettings and tenancies. Um, so the story really is um, once somebody has actually applied for a property, um, they've actually moved in, um, the, there's a number of scenarios where um, they are the, a first time tenant. Um, and with that, they've got sort of a more of a starter tenancy package for the first uh, year or so that they're actually in. Uh, the property uh, and with that comes a little bit of a greater hopefully a greater communication with the housing management housing association and 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 with um you know the housing officers that deal with those uh, one of those issues is actually getting out communication um uh, digitally rather than having to rely on um uh, scheduling visits and viewing face to face just to try and see just to very quickly uh, send out some information to say hi How's it going? Is there any issues? Give us some feedback on how, feedback on how we're doing um, so that we can proactively try and capture anything before it becomes a real big issue. So what I'm going to take you through today is Dynamics 365, some elements around the tenancy information, where we've got our data um, uh, uh, from our housing management system, mainly around financial uh, uh, data and, and, and visits uh, from, from DRS, uh, and seeing how using customer voice, uh, sending out quick surveys to really understand, um, you know, you know, the, the, how, how the, the, the tenant is feeling uh, and whether we need to capture or action anything very, very quickly. Uh, and then we can actually see the results of that survey as well as some automation uh, using Power Automate to then create cases um, and get those um, working um, for, for, for the tenant uh, very, very quickly. Um, that's not to say that all of this can be, you know, uh, you know, face-to-face -face visits can be completely uh, replaced with automation, but what it can do is very quickly reach out to, to, to these tenants um, uh, in an automated way so that actually housing officers have more time um, or to spend on, on resolving issues or, or working with uh, the, the tenants that need it. So I'm going to take you through that journey now uh, very, very quickly uh, and just show you some highlighted areas. So as I said, I'm going to jump on to um, the uh, applications and tenancy application that we have within Dynamics. Just shows you a little dashboard just around uh, the number of tenancies that we've created. It's a very small housing association called Crimson Housing. Um, we have uh, only about 80 fictitious properties, um, all, all in uh, different various uh, letting elements. Um, and what we can actually see here is going to go have a look at our tenancies. Um, and what I'm going to show you is an example of a starter tenancy, um, tenancy uh, 1001002. So if I jump onto this, you can see that um, I'm actually the tenant um, and you've got some information about me here. Uh, and you can see that I'm at one Cherry Close. I have a couple of location alerts and some alerts on here, but I also have um, uh, captured in from the integration is a little bit around finance, my finances. So I've been in about 15 months, uh, but I'm, I'm already in arrears, um, which has been taken from the management system. Um, and it's given my total rent value, but my current balance, I, I'm, I owe 250 pounds. So not a crazy amount, but you know, I, I am identified as in arrears. So um, is there something that, you know, that we need to, to look at here? With Dynamics 365, because um, it's 
uh, the, the workflow engine called Power Automate is integrated, uh, you can actually start scheduling, sending out these communications, or if it's a trigger point, um, you can trigger these uh, communications to go out um, and actually uh, send uh, information to directly to a uh, to a user, uh, to a tenant. So that, that's what we're doing now. So what I'm going to take you through very, very quickly is how we've built a customer voice survey. So one of the Dynamics 365 modules is customer voice. Um, I have a, a project, as you can see, there's some, some feedback going on already. So for this um, area, we already have um, some uh, customer satisfaction metrics that we've already gained. Um, I'll jump into a project, just conscious of time, and we've got some uh, customer feedback. So I've created a starter tenancy form, uh, and it's a starter tenancy feedback form. So initially, we're looking at um, our overall, uh, their overall satisfaction with Crimson Homes. Have they settled in okay? Um, have they got any queries about the tenancy? Um, and there's a couple of other elements. Now, what we've managed to do is customize this to actually include data that we've captured from other systems and actually present that whilst we're, they're going through the survey. One of those areas is um, identifying the current balance um, uh, uh, at a certain date and time and a certain balance. And we've done that through what's known as variables. So in this area, you have the ability to specify variables. These are just uh, default values that we have in here. But what we can see, we can pull back from the system is things like current balance, the date, um, visit date, anything that you have within Dynamics 365 is available as, as data to actually push onto those surveys that you're sending out. Now, this is really critical because rather than just a generic survey that, you know, ask all those questions, they're great, brilliant, but this actually dives into some of the areas uh, that's very specific to, to, to that tenant. So looking at this, um, I'm, I'm also applying logic. So if I have any queries about a tenancy, um, I'm applying the question four to actually be asked um, if, um, if there is any queries and that is answered yes, then I have an additional question. So you don't have to have this long survey that actually has questions that aren't appropriate for the person. So with those two features, as well as being able to brand this and have your own images through here, um, customer voice really is a very, very quick way uh, of getting some communication out to your tenants, but it's, it's useful information that's very personal to the tenant, can be very personal to the tenant. So being able to send this out, um, Blue Peter moment, I've already sent this out to myself, um, and I've received this email. Uh, and again, the branding of that email is very customizable. I've just kept it quite, quite straightforward, really. And it's just said, look, give me some feedback and I can start a survey. Now that takes me directly to the survey um, that show this, then the tenant is able to fill that out. So what's my overall satisfaction? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied. Yes, I've settled into my home. Um, no, I don't have any queries about my tenancy. Oh, okay. So my current balance as of yesterday is 250. Um, do I need any support with payments? Mm, actually, I'm thinking about it now. My housing benefit application, I think I probably need some help with that. So actually, yes, I will. And I'll say, I need some help with my housing benefit application. Um, uh, we also see on the records that there is a housing visit on the 5th of the 2nd. Now, that's really interesting. Um, uh, and Adam Round is scheduled to come round. Um, do I, am I still okay for that date? I think I am. Um, but if I'm not, I can actually send some information back with this survey to actually reschedule that housing visit. Really, really useful. But I'm going to say, no, I'm, I'm good with that. That's absolutely fine. Um, and then can I describe uh, the current interactions? You know, how am I feeling? Yeah, uh, great. Uh, love the communication. Thanks. Brilliant. So I can submit that. Now that's fantastic. It's done a very quick survey quick, short, sharp answers, and away we go. Now, what we've captured from that is some really useful information um, that um, what we've done within Power Automate is we've got a trigger that once a survey has been responded to, we can actually take that information and do something with it. Now, all of the survey, there are some really good questions there, but one of them I said, actually, no, I do need some help. Um, and what we can show uh, with this survey um, 
uh, Power Automate flow is that once we've got the response and uh, we've worked out that is a case needed, we can actually get some case details and actually create an RSO case, so a rent support officer case um, that relates to that tenancy and to and to Ollie Sinclair. So let's jump into that tenancy and find out what's happened once we've done that response. Just going to very quickly refresh the page. The first thing you'll see is that within the timeline, you can see that I've uh, responded to a customer voice survey. So you can uh, go into this record and, and, and view the, the response coming back. Um, you can see that that appointment visit um, that was captured um, was was there as well. So that, that that's where the information came from the uh, from the system. If I have a look and see my cases, I can see that um, if I just sort by newest, you see that the new RSO request has come through. So a case has already been created on the back of that survey and ready to be um, assigned to the right rent support officer to go ahead and give, give Ollie a call, find out what's going on, see if we can help that housing benefit application before that arrears gets, you know, gets in too much trouble with those arrears. So you can see the power of customer voice and the fact that if we've got this data in here, we can do loads of stuff with it. Um, there's some other elements around the, the, the survey. Um, what you can actually see is the number of surveys that have been sent out, ones that have managed to be sent to a person, ones that not responded. So you can see some of those elements uh, being done there. But also, because the survey included some, um, some uh, satisfaction metrics, what we can actually have a look at is generally what is what, what are our starter tenancies feeling? Are they are they satisfied? What, you know, let's get a let's get an understanding of, about some of those metrics. So once this loads, um, it will show you those. And it was actually the first question, which was that star question um, around um, the customer satisfaction. So we're at four point one. That's okay. That's 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 pretty good. Um, it seems to be increasing, uh, which is really really nice. But the sentiment is a really interesting one. So that final question was actually around sentiment analysis. And as you can see, using the AI model within the Power Platform, what it's brought back is that there's actually, you know, 58% is quite positive. There's a couple of neutrals um, and then some negative ones. Now with alerts, what you can do is then set up alerts for those negative um, uh, satisfaction metrics to maybe chase uh, through different channels or try and engage um, that way. And you can use alerts within the system uh, to again, either create cases or, or, or assign those alerts to uh, people that are responsible for trying to uh, trying to really dig into those areas around why they're not satisfied. And it may well be that they've, they've mentioned that within the survey and a case is already there. And therefore it's just a case of monitoring. But that was just a very, very quick uh, whistle stop tour of customer voice. Uh, the powers of what you can do within Dynamics 365. Um, I'm conscious of time, uh, so I won't go into uh, any more detail around the accelerator, what we can do and how we do it, but that's just a very quick, uh, quick, quick view of, uh, of customer voice. So what I'm going to do now is really open it back up to, uh, to questions um, from, uh, from you guys um, and uh, just really opening up discussion. Um, so has anything come through in the chats? Um, so we do have one. I think this is for um, customer voice. Um, is the URL customizable to look like it's come from our company rather than customer voice at Microsoft.com? Some of our customers might not trust other domains. Uh, yeah, absolutely. In terms of uh, that was very much uh, our demo environment. Um, and we actually have, uh, you know, I've not changed any domain names or any, any of that elements, uh, but absolutely um, that is configurable. You can configure that to, to, to come from uh, inside your domain. Absolutely. Um, any, any other questions, guys? What I'll do, uh, okay, yep, yeah, so we've got one from Sue. Um, we have uh, open housing and are limited to their APIs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, and, and they have to update data. Are, are you able to overcome this and are you limited as well? So Alan, this one's for you in terms of integration, a common, a common issue. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think all the housing management system providers are guilty of this, that um, they control the APIs that you have um, and the licensing costs can be variable dependent on what mood they are they're in that day. Um, certainly I see some pricing around APIs to update um, around about sort of, you know, 35,000 something like that for um, a, just a license to update something with for, through an API. Um, so yeah, as far as open housing goes, um, it's actually got quite a good range of APIs. Um, they often don't tell you about all the ones that are there. They're now sort of going a bit quiet because of course they've got the new is it one housing platform coming out as well so they're they're restricting them a little bit <clears throat> the general rule of thumb is is that we can take any data out and surface it as an api uh, without you having any apis because we can read the data directly out of all your databases and surface the data as though it is an api allowing crimson to connect and access the data or any other system um, when it comes to putting data back in we will only use an approved interface doesn't have to be an API. It can also be a loader. It can be a data loader. It can be a custom interface. It can be anything, but we have to use an approved um, uh, method to update data in the database. Now, open housing used to have the thing that you could write your own. It was a bit of a gray area. We steer away from it, but there are still consultants out there that will write you bespoke interfaces. But I would always say it's just one of those difficult conversations to have with your housing management system provider. My only word of advice um, is don't show. It's a bit like facing a lion. Don't show that you any fear and don't show as though you're desperate. It'd be, be very nonchalant. Oh, it'd be great if I had an API for adding repairs, but I presume your system can't do it um, and see what you can get it for. If you go on really desperate, I really need this API, you'd be amazed at the price they go for. Um, but we are limited the same way everybody else is, unfortunately, when it comes to updating data. Yeah. You could resort, I mean, we can resort to data robots, things like that, but we try and steer away from that. We'd rather see you with a proper API. Okay. Yeah, brilliant. Great, great question, Alan. Um, yeah, we've, uh, within Crimson, that we've had a number of implementations where we've, yeah, we certainly, uh, you know, struggle with, with, with the access of those uh, open housing APIs. So, uh, yeah, interesting one. Um, it's got a question just around uh, licensing. So, uh, how does licensing work with Dynamics and the Power Platform coexisting? Um, you know, do you need a full Dynamics license? Really good question, actually. Um, and uh, Microsoft are uh, really coy with their licensing. Um, but but to, to put it simply, um, the Dynamics 365 modules like customer service, like customer voice, um, they are modules that sit actually on top of the Power Platform itself. Now, in terms of licensing, if you know that you are going to purchase, um, you are going to utilize customer service, for example, you would be, you would purchase Microsoft Dynamics 365 licenses for a certain set of modules, and within that, you automatically get our platform access because it's built on that platform. Um, but there is, uh, you know, this we, we have li licensing experts within Crimson that can work out the best option for your licensing. And one of those elements is if you actually have users that don't utilize um, the specific modules of customer service or sales or customer voice, but actually they need access to the data and to some custom functionality or configuration or custom applications that we built. There is a way of actually just having a power platform license that allows you to still do the things that those users can do. So it, it really is dependent upon the type of implementation you do. Um, but if you've got a Dynamics 365 license, you don't really need a Power, a power Platform license. It's kind of incorporated, um, but, but, it, but it doesn't mean you have to buy Dynamics 365. If you're just utilizing a certain part of the platform, you can just have a Power Platform license, which is, which is a lot cheaper. So it really does depend on, on what you guys are wanting to do, uh, but happy to, to, to chase that up and give you a little bit more insight into, into that. OK, um, really good, uh, really good discussions, really good questions. Thank you very much for that. Um, what we'll do now is uh, just kind of finish off by saying what, what, what are the next steps? 
Um, so please, please, please get in touch. Um, we can arrange uh, a proof of concept. So that would be um, myself from the consultancy team uh, coming in and uh, and doing a bit of a, a bit of a proof of concept or an art of the possible sessions. Um, please complete the post event survey if possible, um, and and follow us on LinkedIn. Um, you guys have been a fantastic audience. Um, really good input at the start. Really, really appreciated that. Um, and obviously, we can send out any of those metrics as well if they're useful for anybody uh, looking at uh, creating business cases for system integrations uh, and using Dynamics 365 customer voice. Happy to to have a look at doing some proof of concept work. So um, yeah, thank you very much, guys. Uh, and and I really have a great day. Um, and uh, hopefully, the uh, the weather isn't too cold for everyone. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Oliver. Thanks.